I think we have heard from Professor Mearsheimer uh, a brilliant analysis of what the situation that we're in, and I agree totally with everything he has described. And I must say that uh, in looking at things today, I am, I cannot be optimistic. Um, and first of all, I think that uh, it has made clear that whatever happens in the future, uh, Ukraine cannot be preserved as a, you might say, a viable and successful state within those borders that it inherited in 1991. And I say inherited because these borders were set actually literally by communists uh, and uh, uh, they, um, uh, they include areas that had not been traditionally part of Ukraine. And the tragedy of Ukraine, one of them has been that as they were struggling as all the other ex-Soviet states to throw off the shackles of communism and all the irrationalities of that, uh, they were confronted uh, with a population that was deeply divided. And they were also um, uh, subjected to a constitution uh, which did not allow federalism, a federal system, uh, which would somehow uh, give more local autonomy uh, to uh, different groups. So that you had a seesaw uh, uh, elections uh, where by slightly more than 50%, the presidency would be won by one side or the other, and then that president would name all the equivalent of the state governors, the provincial leaders. That was a recipe for disaster. Uh, and because there was no leader coming forward, uh, that really defined a, a, you might say, a new sense of Ukrainian statehood, uh, which would uh, may be comfortable both to the Ukrainian speakers and the Russian speakers. So Ukraine's problem uh, was internal. Now, as we have gone forward in our policies, I think that as Professor Mearsheimer made clear, what we have to consider is not our analysis of the way things are, but what the Russian perception is. Uh, after all, people act on their perceptions. And the Russian perception is that we have aggressively um, uh, attempted uh, to detach um, both Ukraine and Georgia uh, from uh, any substantial influence by Russia. By the way, if another country had done something similar to one of our neighbors, uh, we would have reacted, I believe, uh, perhaps even more forcefully uh, than uh, uh, President Putin has. So I think we have to bear that in mind. There's almost a hysteria today in condemning Russia. Uh, as a, uh, and as a uh, unprovoked aggressor, yes, Russia has been an unprovoked aggressor, but they had a precedent. What do you think the US uh, attack on Iraq was? A country nearly halfway across the world, which did not threaten us and had not threatened us. We had attacked it, invaded it, cheered for our technology that enabled them. No images of how this affected the people on the ground. You know, I'm ashamed to say that the United States has given President Putin every trick in his playbook. Now, that doesn't make it right what he has done, but we need to. Now, this attempt, in effect, to wage a virtually total war against Russia, um, I think is deeply and deeply misguided. We face so many threats, mutual threats. We're not over the COVID uh, uh, epidemic yet. Uh, this fighting and 
all of the refugees and so on, this almost certainly is going to make it worse. Uh, and we have the whole nuclear threat, which uh, Professor Mearsheimer has described very well. Uh, but, and what about the, the long-term threats of global warming? Uh, how are we going to continue to deal with all these flows of refugees, whether they be economic or, or whatnot? We are simply undermining the, the real long-term interests of our countries in getting into this sort of fight. And I'd also say those who think we're simply going to choke Russia and bring it down should understand that this is going to have a serious effect on many other people. Uh, in my day, when I was in the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union had to import close to 30 million tons of grain a year just to survive. This was a tremendous uh, liability, and it's one that we were able to use to pressure them in many ways. Right now, both Ukraine and Russia are net and major grain exporters. It tells you what the new system is like and how different it is from the Soviet Union, by the way. And this affects many countries. You start cutting off that trade. Uh, and also uh, the, the trade not only in uh, uh, energy, uh, but also in precious metals and other things which are essential uh, for much of modern technology. You know, I think that uh, we're going to see, if we continue these policies, and it looks as if we're going to, a real a pushback uh, by people who are not willing, really, uh, to, to take some of the cost to them uh, for uh, these sanctions, because they are there. And finally, I would say, don't underestimate the Russian ability uh, to uh, over in a fairly short period of time to overcome some of the technological problems. I also think that the use of the, uh, of the dollar as a weapon, which is what we have been doing, is going in the long run to undermine uh, our dominance of the world financial system. That may take a decade or two but I think there are very serious implications entirely aside uh, from uh, the nuclear threat, which is very much there. Though I agree with Professor Mearsheimer, it is not probable, but it is possible. And we have to worry about that.